This is One on One. Dr. Yahuru Williams is Chief Historian the Jackie Robinson Foundation and Professor and Chair, Department of History at Fairfield University. Good to see you, Dr. Williams. Nice to see you, Steve. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. By the way, put in uh, perspective for us, the Jackie Robinson Foundation is? Um, was founded in 1973 by Jackie's widow, Rachel Robinson, to advance uh, Jackie's memory, to memorialize Jackie, but also uh, to deal with an issue that was very near and dear to Jackie's heart, and that was ensuring that young people of color would have access to education, would be able to afford to go to college. Uh, Jackie, when he was at UCLA, was unable to complete, had to drop out in his senior year because he ran out of funding. And so, in order to memorialize him, Rachel said, let's do something that he would have cared about very deeply, and that was addressing this issue for young people. How'd you get involved in this? I came to the foundation uh, quite unexpectedly. I'd been doing some work for another company and ran into the president, uh, Della Baez, at the Congressional Black Caucus. And she said, how'd you like to come and do some work with us in, in New York for the Jackie Robinson Foundation? And Jackie is such an iconic figure. And the foundation does such tremendous work. I couldn't turn him down. Mm. You know, for people who don't know Jackie Robinson, and it's funny, we're right here in Midtown Manhattan. You can see uh, 66 and Broadway be behind us, but right over in Brooklyn. You know, it's interesting. You think about the Dodgers. Absolutely. You know, back in 1947. 47. Uh, Jackie Robinson broke the color line, right, in baseball. Put that in perspective for us as to how significant it was and what Jackie Robinson faced at that time. It's a tremendous story, Steve, primarily because we often forget how rigid segregation was in America at that time. And so when Branch Rickey and Jackie Robinson got together... Branch to, Rickey was, in fact, the owner of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Absolutely. When they got together to embark on this experiment, no one had any expectation that whether it would be successful or not. So this was a great undertaking. And 1947 is kind of interesting because it's post-World War II, and certainly the nation has this ideological conflict with the Soviet Union. And we were trying to make the case that our democracy um, had real meaning. And so as Jackie and Branch Rickey are undertaking this experiment, what they're really putting on trial or putting into question is um, how strong our democracy was. And fortunately for us, it was a, a success, and they transformed America. But Jackie faced all kinds of uh, indignities and things that uh, people, you know, it's interesting when I think about the team, my mother happened to be a big Brooklyn Dodger fan. So you talk about Pee Wee Reese and, uh, and Duke Schneider and, and, and the rest of them. Were they good to Jackie? They were very good to Jackie. And in fact, one of the, the great things about that story that we like to share with young people and why we feel that a Jackie Robinson Museum is so important is that people understand the, the significance of diversity in that historical moment. We've come so long as a society and we want to celebrate that evolution, but at the same time, telling those stories, you know, Pee Wee Reese's gesture of coming out and, and putting his arm around Jackie on the field one day as Jackie was being heckled uh, by fans uh, from the other team, certainly speaks to this moment in America where people started to, as, as Dr. <clears throat> King talked about, see people for the content of the character, not the color of their skin. And the museum itself, as you raise money, you have the facility. We do. Now, as you raise money, what is the rest of the money that you're raising going toward? Is it scholarships? Well, the scholarships are actually associated with the foundation's work with young people. So there are right. kind of two entities that are, that are operating. Um, it's really creating an educational center and an outreach program that will allow us to reach uh, children throughout the country, in fact, throughout the world. Um, our president has a global vision for this museum. So what you're looking at now... Those are renderings, right? Absolutely, yes. And what's, what's tremendous about this, again, is that we want this to be a space for dialogue about issues of race and social justice in America. And it's unfortunate that there, you know, there, there's no museum of civil rights in the city of New York that addresses that issue. There is not. There is not. Nothing that deals with the civil rights movement in that context. And this would be an incredible opportunity for New Yorkers and everyone else in, in the region and the country to come together um, in the name of, in the spirit of everything that Jackie Robinson stood for, to talk honestly, openly, and in a constructive, meaningful way about race. Yes. And it's funny, saying talking about race sounds like it's a subject. It's mm -hmm. not. It's not. And, you know, it's interesting about Jackie because we think of him as a ball player, but after he left the Dodgers, he was very involved in the civil rights movement and issues involving economic justice. New York, somehow, when we think about the civil rights movement, escapes people's um, 
idea of what the civil rights movement was about. Well, Dr. King delivers his Riverside Church speech here, which deals with the issue of poverty and injustice. What we do at the foundation in providing scholarships to young people who can't afford to go to college is to deal with those same issues. And we want the museum to be a space to talk about a range of social issues mm. that deal with civil rights and economic justice, social justice in general. Let me ask you, you work at Fairfield, put it in perspective, how much do you love the teaching part of what you do and how much does that drive your connection to the Jackie Robinson Initiative? Jackie was fond of saying a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives and teaching is one of those professions and I think you understand this as a broadcaster where you're able to touch people in a particular kind of way and to see how those uh, that transforms people's lives. It's a very special, almost a, a sacred uh, obligation that you have in that, in that capacity. Sacred. Absolutely. Play that out a little bit. In a sense, um, we look at our, our scholars, and one of the things that we encourage is volunteerism, uh, and we give awards annually for our scholars. Last year, our scholars did about 81,000 hours of community service. One young lady in particular named Amber Spears from University of Michigan worked with an organization called Operation Hope, helping our prisoners elevate. Hmm. So we continue to promote Jackie's vision of touching people's lives, and teaching allows me to do that, working with the foundation allows me to do that. People go onto the website, real quick, Dr. Williams, let people know, if they go onto the website and they contribute, it's tax deductible. It's tax deductible, um, and you'll be helping us do a tremendous work in addressing the needs of, of these students of color, but also um, helping to get that museum up and running to share Jackie's legacy and to talk about these issues. Given everything that Jackie Robinson has given to this country, and um, forget about baseball, he's given to this country and the spirit of this country is the least we could do for his legacy and for his widow. Absolutely. Um, Dr. Yuhuru Williams, who is the chief historian at the Jackie Robinson Foundation, professor and chair of the Department of History at Fairfield University. I want to thank you for joining us at One on One. Thanks, Steve. It was a pleasure. Good stuff. Thanks again. Stay with us. This is One on One. We're right back right after this. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Medical Center, Berkeley College, TD Bank, Qualcare Inc., a local managed care company covering 750,000 New Jersey residents the law firm of Gibbons PC, Verizon Communications, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.